Let's stay now with the result of the first round of the French presidential election and talk to Nabila Ramdani, journalist specialising in French and Arab affairs. What we saw yesterday in France, was that a political earthquake? I think it was, uh, Mary, in the sense that the two main traditional parties were effectively rejected uh, from the second round uh, of the election. And this was actually unprecedented. And the the rise of Macron came as a surprise uh, to, to anyone. Uh, and indeed, uh, the Le Pen, uh, Marine Le Pen, going through the second round uh, was also uh, something that, uh, you know, uh, was a bit of a political uh, earthquake. And it has to be said that the um, victory of Macron yesterday was particularly significant because he was barely heard of before this election. He has come from nowhere and he's now on the verge of becoming president of France. And I know that a lot of people in Britain will uh, want to portray uh, this as a Marine Le Pen victory. But it is anything but. She has simply rallied the usual core Front National vote that has been around the party uh, was founded uh, in 1972. In actual fact, she was expected to win the first round, but she lost and she will now, um, uh, and, and I'm not afraid to say, uh, to predict uh, that she will uh, pro probably lose the final round to um, Macron by a landslide in the final round. So she rallied her base and her base only, but Macron, he, he reached out, uh, as he said himself, he was borrowing from the right and borrowing from, from the left. He reached out to the right, he reached out from the left. How did he do it? Well, I, I have to say Macron is probably the luckiest man in France at the moment. He's not even 40. Uh, he was expected to do well, coming third or fourth and perhaps getting some experience, some political experience. Remember, he has never put himself up for any uh, uh, electoral uh, post before uh, and perhaps come back in five or ten years' time. But in fact, what's happened is that François Fillon's destruction and the endemic weakness within the traditional left and especially the Socialist Party has opened up the entire election uh, to him. And his most brilliant move, with hindsight, was to resign from François Hollande's government as finance minister and distance himself from the Socialist Party. And that took a lot of guests, uh, and uh, seemingly it gave him no base at all, but he has now created uh, one of his own. And there I say he represents uh, quite a slick uh, election property to. He is telegenic, he is charismatic, and he appeals to people across uh, the political spectrum. I mean, in terms of image, think of a young Tony Blair in 1997, or Justin Trudeau in Canada, or even perhaps uh, even a John uh, F. Kennedy, and young people like him who tend to play up to the media age and who have a bit of uh, star quality about them tend to do very well at elections, especially when they combine it with some serious uh, thinking and obvious intellect. Was he celebrating too early? Because there is a second round. He was in a swanky Paris bistro after the result. And there's still two weeks of hard campaigning to go. How, how will that uh, go down in France? Well, you know, Macron uh, likes to say he's neither of the left nor of the right, but it has to be said that he has in fact taken a lot of socialists with him, including uh, senior figures who, ha who are joining his En Marche movement and his background as a banker, as a liberal um, politician, will also attract uh, people from the right uh, in the second round. And more crucially, it has to be said, is I think uh, Marine Le Pen has almost certainly exhausted her core support going into the second round. You've got hard right nationalists who were furious at the demise of the French Empire and particularly the loss of Algeria who built the FN. Plenty of them mythologized a collaborationist a World War II Vichy government as well. And the party is also made up of, you know, um, people who um, uh, capitalize on or use historic racism and, and anti-Semitism because they oppose ethnically and religiously diverse communities and, and essentially blame foreigners for all of society's ills. And traditionally, it has to be said that the FN can rise up to 30 percent, but it never gets much higher. Macron will now see all of his political rivals, anybody but Le Pen, rallying to his side. But what does she need to do? Will she try to broaden her appeal? Can she broaden her appeal? 
Well, I don't think she can, uh, to be perfectly honest. But what he will be relying on is, we've heard so far, the calls from senior politicians on the right and indeed the left uh, calling to block uh, the uh, fascist threat, if you like, uh, of Le Pen going, uh, well, landing at the Elysee Palace. And it's a tradition in France referred to as the Republican Pact, essentially getting people of all political persuasions getting together to keep uh, the National Front uh, out uh, of the top job, effectively. This doesn't mean that um, uh, all, uh, Macron will not face difficulties uh, once uh, at the uh, Elysee Palace. He will face challenging, challenges of his own, uh, and not least of all, forming uh, alliances before and after parliamentary elections uh, in June. Nabila Ramdani, thank you very much for joining us.